Someone. Someone. Oh. Oh. Appeals meeting uh, this evening. Uh, Last Thursday, the board uh, met uh, for one final session with our 40B um, on the Lakeview Eden Street um, property, uh, which had gone on for approximately uh, one year. Uh, the, the decision was made uh, at that meeting. However, uh, it needed to be reviewed uh, by the town council one last time, which we allowed to occur, uh, and we extended the actual signing and the stamping of the documents uh, this for this evening. Um, rather than hold that off, I'm going to take care of that first. Uh, we are short one member of the board uh, this evening. If that one member does not show up, I will tell. Uh, I assume that we have the three candidates for the hearings tonight that you have an option, I'm telling you right up front, with four members, this is a five-member board. If it were a variance, it would be four out of the five. That means all five would have to vote in the affirmative. If there's special permits, three of the five, I'm sorry, four of the five will also need to... Strike that out. It's that discussion. Okay. Uh, so the first order of business this evening, I'm going to have you wait a few seconds. Um, we will stamp the decision uh, in. Um, we'll actually sign it this evening and give it to the um, our planning uh, member, uh, which will, one decision will be kept for the community uh, in the clerk's office, and the other will be given to the uh, petitioner. So, we have two sets of plans before us. One is a control document. Now, with all that said, what was the original? <laughs> what was the original case number? Uh, Eighteen dash zero one. Also have the arch the architectural drawings. Is that your architectural You did not. Did not, yeah. <laughs> right.
now for the actual decision. Um, I don't think we need that stamped in because this is stamped in. Yep. We no, just each need to sign the back. Uh, yep. We'll put the date on the front. Mm -hmm. very much. We are now completed at a uh, very long set of hearings. So we'll move on into tonight's hearings. First of which is uh, case number 19-03, uh, 35 Shoot Street. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, on Wednesday, March the 6th, 2019, 7 p.m. on the application of Laura Doherty and Paul Reynolds, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9. For a special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.0, 7.3, and 7.32 to construct a second story addition to an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 35 Shoot Street in Reading, Mass. Uh, unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associated members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woodland, Linfield, Stone, and Wilmington. Um, the applicant is here this evening. Um, this is for everybody's going to have hear this read three times. Uh, I the testimony given before the board, this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may wish to speak this evening, it does not hurt. Please stand and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given before me, before this board, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the answers I do. I, I do. do. Okay. <coughs> you have the floor. Thank you. I uh, am Nancy Toomey. I am the architect helping Laura and Paul with their addition. Um, I have put together just a quick narrative I wanted to give you that uh, outlines uh, a little bit more detail what it is that we're doing for you guys. And then also I have some pictures. The goal is to, uh, the house was built in 1861 according to the assessor's uh, card. And uh, it looks big from the front, but it's actually just four rooms and one and a half uh, bathrooms, which I think is quite interesting. The goal is to add a kitchen and mudroom entry at the first floor at the back, and then a third bedroom with a bathroom on the second floor. Um, the house is currently non-conforming uh, on both side yard setbacks. It's currently uh, 10 and a half feet from the south side and 13 and a half from the north. So as we add the addition, uh, it in the property line angles, the uh, addition gets uh, 
we've set it back from the uh, south side, but as it goes back, it gets as close as 11.3. Uh, and then on the north side, we start out at 14.1, but then it becomes conforming as it gets towards the back. Uh, the little proposed deck is uh, 16 feet from the side. Uh, so our hope tonight is that uh, you will, we're asking for a special permit based on 7.3.2. We don't think that this uh, addition is any way more detrimental to the neighborhood than uh, the house is currently. As I mentioned, uh, it looks a lot larger from the front. So as we go back in the back, uh, it, it isn't going to change that view or that look to the neighborhood. Uh, the one advantage, too, is that we're removing the small side porch, uh, which right now is their back door. By removing that porch and door, it actually affords the uh, south side neighbor more privacy with this addition. Um, I have pictures. If you would like to see this, is, these are um, photos taken from the south side neighbor's house. I don't know if you want to take one of the past or not. Um, just so you can see it, I don't know if you had a chance to drive by it. Uh, these pictures, the next set is from uh, the side where the side porch is that we're removing. And then um, the final picture is just the back of the existing house, uh, just to show where the addition is off the back. So. Uh, any questions? I may have to help. had a chance to review the documents and the new uh, information this evening. I'll ask the board if they have questions or concerns. First, uh, I want to start off with uh, Nick. Yeah, sure. Could you tell me more about the topography of the lot? I see sure. there's a retaining wall. Yeah, uh, the retaining wall on the, s the north side, you're saying. Yeah, that house sits up fairly high compared to their property, so it's a pretty level lot uh, overall. And the neighbor uh, to the south is also pretty level to this lot. But on the north side, uh, there's an existing stone retaining wall that I guess holds back the land for the house above them on the left. Chute Street kind of angles down. It's an interesting old, very old street with some very beautiful homes on it, but that house happens to sit up. It's also a very old house. Pretty big, yeah. I don't have any more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy, quick question. Uh, now you say the side entryway is coming, is being demolished or coming off? Or? Yeah, there's a side porch. You'll see it on the south side. Right. Um, that's being removed. That door will come out and that porch will come down entirely. Come down. So the 10.5, though, is from 
the we didn't use that in the calculations, but that is probably about five feet off of the right. Yeah, even a little yeah, bit less it, than that. It yeah, wasn't measured. I took it to 10.5 10 being to the corner to the corner of the main, of the building. main building. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I took a ride by, but it, uh, it stopped and looked a bit, but. Uh, Difficult to see now. The existing garage and back is current, and that's being used. Uh, yeah, it's it for now. <laughs> <laughs> for now, uh, it's very old. I, you know, it's interesting trying to come back and figure out how these houses work. This was built in eighteen. Yes, I saw that. Sixty-one. I was very surprised. Yeah, oh. but it's post and beam. It's quite old. It's very interesting, and they have that existing access easement that's shared between the two lots okay, yeah. and the door to that existing garage actually faces the south oh, boy. so my thought was that that access way was probably an old driveway that went up to that building sure and uh, I don't know the, the house on the right that actually faces Woburn that's probably newer <coughs> Uh, then no, they were the same house. Same house. Until oh, 19, exactly. 1940, they moved it off. Oh, interesting. So there you go. So hmm. it's an interesting neighborhood. <laughs> okay. And since it's that old, did you have to do anything with the uh, historical... Uh, we're not demolishing anything. We're adding to it. <laughs> right. So I don't believe that... And I don't know that it's on the historic register in Reading. Yeah, it's right. not. It's, it's not on the register. No, we're okay. making it... It's not in a historic district or anything. No, it is not. That. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, looking at it, uh, appears to me to be legal non-conforming a uh, lot and... Uh, also, the structure, if it was built in 1860, I would say it's legal non-conforming and without any setbacks, certainly. Uh, the proposed uh, development, or the proposed addition, they're not encroaching uh, into the side setbacks any more than uh, what's already exists, so there's no further non-compliance. Uh, it's at the rear, as you said, of the existing dwelling, so uh, you're not going to see too much uh, change from the street or from the front of the uh, dwelling. Lot coverage stays less than 25% Correct. Uh, on that. And uh, certainly I, I didn't see that it, uh, this new addition uh, would be substantially, any more substantially detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing dwelling that's there now. So I, I don't have any further questions and right now. I without hearing any other comments, I would support it. Sorry. I think it's a very straightforward addition to an existing nonconformity. I don't have any <coughs> negative comments or derogatory comments whatsoever. It's uh, you're not creating a new nonconformity anyway. You're making best use of what space you have. That's right. And doing it in compliance with the ground rules and the bylaws of the town already. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Right. Thank you. Eric. Uh, I have no questions and I have no comments. <laughs> no problems with it. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Uh, I'm going to last, Nancy. Um, <laughs> the uh, bulkhead, are you talking about just a... Um, a metal bulkhead. A metal bulkhead on the correct. side. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Which is not subject to setback correct. controls. That's correct. Um, you are uh, at the closest point, 14.7 uh, feet, uh, which is actually in the front. Correct. Um, the five feet in the back does not. I. I'm sorry. The ten. 10.5 feet is the closest point. That's correct. Um, because the stoop is not calculated again also, so 10.5 feet is what we're look, looking at, and you're coming back to 11.3. I found, um, in going by the house, I had to go by it and then back up and go forward yeah. and then back up again. Um, That's right, it's one way. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> But I was already backing up. There you go. <laughs> My question was the southern side driveway, which seems to straddle the line. Yeah. Uh, who is using that 
driveway right now. They're not. It's actually the driveway for the southern neighbor is on their property. So this really, this access easement probably should go away. It's not being used by anybody. Okay, so it's it's only four feet, or let's see, yeah, it's four feet. That easement is four feet, but there's a fence that divides it. So uh, there's no driveway there that's on their property. It's There's a driveway on the neighbor's property that is on their property. I noticed the fence, um, and in this picture, the fence looks like it's right up against the house, uh, which I know it's not. Yeah, um, yeah it's probably just that. Look at the, yeah. When I, when I looked at, looked at it um, today, a second time, um, the corner of the fence is there. I didn't recognize that the fence was down the middle of the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. All, so this must have been an older picture. No, that's new. So there's no driveway there. So if you look at that picture where I'm standing is at the neighbor's driveway looking at the fence. And the fence is on the property line. I believe, right? Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. So that driveway, yeah, that driveway, and that little, there is a little bit of a rock wall that the neighbors, I assume, put in when they put the driveway in to level it out. Yeah. Um, but that picket fence is all on the property line. So the driveway that you see is the neighbor's backyard, essentially, because they, they actually face Woburn. And their back of their house faces this this drive. Yeah, I wasn't looking so much at the, uh, the picket fence. I was looking at the uh, vinyl. Yeah, and that's there. also pretty much on the property line. Is that your fence, or did the neighbors put that in? That's what that is. Yeah. So, I would think from what I'm seeing in the site plan yeah. that that stone wall is your stone wall. Probably. That must be. You might want to know. clarify because while you're showing a straight line on the property here, your fence jogs. Yeah, it does. See, you've got there's this little stone wall. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And then it jogs back. Yes, I think it is yeah. ours. And this has been there since you bought the house. Yes. Right? Yeah, so that these are existing structures. So there's no questions with the neighbors in regard to the location of the property line. It's been surveyed and marked, and people know. Uh, there's an easement that shows on our deed, but not on theirs, but they're oh, aware of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're aware of it, yeah. That's interesting. But we're not putting any structures in that easement, so... No, it's just an existing condition that's not being altered. It's just yeah. to ensure that all parties... Yeah, know, know about it. Yeah, it's a good idea. And you're aware of what your full property line is, which, according... I would suspect is the stone wall is yours. Right, it looks like, like any that. future maintenance is yeah. in your, I would assume. But anyway, it's a small point, just looking to clarify yeah. the discrepancy between what I see in a satellite photo. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, other than that, I didn't uh, see any um, any reasons why uh, we couldn't honor uh, the request. Um, but I do want to go to um, our building commissioner, uh, Mark. Um, any comments? Um, Mr. Chairman, I just have one comment, which is really a point of order more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, Ms. Toomey's uh, extra documents that she supplied. Uh, paragraph two, the home is non-conforming with both side yard setbacks. It is currently 10.5 from the south side property line and 13.6 from the north side property line. Uh, if you look at the front corner, it's actually 12.1 oh, right. from the north. It's just a point of order. It really doesn't that's matter to anything. That's right. I'm just a stickler for the yeah, numbers. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that. Yeah, you're right. 12 that, that's point, all I have. 12.1 is the closest. I was just looking at the back. Thank you. And actually, the control document again, again here is the um, same plan, plan itself. Yeah, same plan. Uh, well, um, I'll open the uh, the this portion of the uh, hearing to the public. If there are any individuals who wish to ask questions or make a comment, seeing none. Questions from the south side neighbor. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, this is dramatic. This is dramatic. You uh, did check in and put your name on the list. I certainly, I certainly will. We're at 89 Woodward Street. Uh, but excellent. Cheryl and Cheryl. if you would, I asked you, I didn't even yeah, know that. Yeah, so. Um, and would, if you would stand. Sure, yeah, um, sure, sorry. My uh, name is Testimony, he has testimony given under Rose, so. Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And your answer is, I do. I do. Okay. And <laughs> your name, your name and address for the Nathan record. Nathan Chesley, 89 Woodland Street. Okay. So uh, no, no comments. Southside neighbor. Um, I think functionally, we think about that stone wall on the fence as the property boundary, uh, and so I don't think there would be any dispute about that. We had the house. We purchased the house in 2015 and have a full survey. Which I don't have in, on hand, but I think it'd be very easy to verify that. Uh, and we've spoken with uh, with, with Paul and Mara about the existing easement, um, which exists and, and really serves no purpose. I believe the history is that was the guest home for 89 Woodward Street over a century ago, and then they subdivided the property, and that's why it's not conforming. Uh, and I suspect that there was originally a driveway that occupied all of that space. So. Uh, no issues, no other comments. Well, I do have then a question. Is the easement that is referred to there, is that recorded someplace? We have to check. Uh, I don't have my files on hand. We were discussing this last night um, at a very high level. The surveyor did mention that he found it. Yes, um, on your, uh, with on your deed. Yeah. yeah, but not on their deed. Yeah. But um, Could I, have an attorney take a look at it. Yeah, we have we have some hard documentation from a 2015 purchase. I do not have enough information to comment on the record about my knowledge of it. But um, well, the uncertainty, I mean, that goes with it, since this decision is going to be reported also, um, and there are one of the stipulations, one of the conditions, for approval is to do that. Um, if it is is recorded, um, that's fine. If it is not recorded, uh, I think it would be in your best, both of your best interests to have it recorded so that, again, at the time that you wish to move on and sell your property, either one of you, there is something on, on the record that uh, is to follow the, off, follow the property document. Yeah, I think we're in full agreement on that. I, I would assume it is, since it is shown on the certified assess, uh, excuse me, survey as plan, that the surveyor did find that uh, you know, in the registry, I would think. But he's not here, so. <laughs> that's, that's the reason I brought yeah. it up, and I yeah. think the same reason the cow brought it up. I, I, would, I would think it's a, a real good chance that it is, it, but. Yep. Well, Just to, Paul, you were saying it's on your, you have it, you have a record of it on your deed. Correct. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it exists yeah. in at least one place. Okay. Okay. Then I'll close the subject matter of the public hearing uh, on this particular item. Um, all in favor of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I'll then accept a motion to move forward on this particular request. I'll make a motion. Sorry. I make a motion to grant the petitioners, Laura Doherty and Paul Reynolds, a special permit, including bylaw 73.3.2, to construct a second story addition to an existing non conforming dwelling on the property located at 35 Shoot Street in Reading. In accordance with plot plan of land dated November 20, 2018, prepared and certified by John D. Sullivan III, in Box 2004, Wilton, Massachusetts, and architectural drawings sheets 1 through 10, dated August 14, 2018, prepared by Toomey Design in Reading, Massachusetts. This permit is subject to the following conditions. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plan prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Secondly, 
the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector final construction plans for the proposed structure along with the, the as-built foundation plan for the structure prior to the issuance of a building permit and third the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector as built plans of the new structure prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit Number second second Up seconds any questions no. ready for the vote all in favor five zero zero the voting members of the uh, full-time uh, nick bob myself Sai, and eric uh, okay. Having taken the vote and approval, you're all set. Uh, I do need to, st I can stamp in. I'll need a second set. Stick with the work set. We're all out. I tried both. This is the one. There you go. Oh, appropriate some funds. Hey, probably need that again. Yeah, you're right. We've actually stamped in uh, the um, certified plot plan in the in the past, have we? Have we stamped it? Yeah. Yeah. We have to. Yeah. Okay. I have anyway. Yeah. I couldn't remember. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. 
The next hearing uh, is case number 19-0477 Summer Street. Now uh, the Fishers are here, I assume. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at Blackman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading Mass, on Wednesday, March the 6th, 2019, at 7 p.m. On the applications of Daniel A. Damari, uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws 40A, Section 9, for a special permit, under the Reading Bylaws, Section 5.3.2, 5.4.7, and 7.3.2 to raise the existing screen porch in order to expand the kitchen, add a new screen porch, and create an accessory apartment attached to existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 77 Summer Ave in Reading, Massachusetts. <coughs> Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the uh, voters list, except to say that the voters were notified, as were the following, Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engine Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as was the Planning Boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this Board is taken under oath, so if you wish, think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Um, do you swear that the testimony given before this board this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You have been twice tonight. So you're doing double duty tonight. <laughs> double Nancy. duty. Nancy Toomey, I'm the architect for this project as well. Um, this home was built in 1930. Dan and Joe are here. Uh, and they're looking to do two things, and we've got a request in for a, an accessory apartment, which will be a single bedroom, uh, and it is meant uh, for, their, uh, for Jill's mother, Dottie, uh, to live in. And, uh, and then the other request we have is a special permit because the uh, house is non-conforming, uh, and they are uh, hoping to add on a screen porch at the back which, because of the way the house is shaped, it's going to be closer to the uh, side uh, yard on the north side than the 15 feet allows. So the, the apartment will be completely conforming. It's on the side. It's the proposed one-story addition on the plot plan. Um, it is on the side of the house. This property is up a hill. It's actually quite a bit of, uh, of raise towards the back. And there's an existing paved driveway that's uh, now being shared with their next door neighbor on the south. Um, so this addition will snug in in between. Um, there's also the main house is going to be expanded with a, a bigger kitchen towards the back, hence the removal of the existing screen porch and a mudroom entry with a half bath. Uh, there isn't a, a current uh, bath on the first floor for this particular house, so it's to add a, a half bath. Um, that front entry, that mudroom entry, uh, there is a door currently there for the mother to be able to get between the home, uh, the main home and her apartment, but its intended use is for the main dwelling. That's their primary, uh, going to be the primary, well, the mudroom entrance, which always becomes the primary entrance after time. The pr uh, actual house, the uh, I'm sorry, the apartment, the primary entrance will be off of the side towards the back where the driveway, uh, now it doesn't show it extended, but that's going to be extended back there. So that's the primary entrance for the, for the apartment. Uh, secondary entrance will be into the screen porch. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, so the, uh, and then the special permit, as I said, is for the 14.4, which uh, because of the way the screen porch extends out and the property line on that side is getting closer, it becomes 14.4. The actual uh, two-story garage is 2.5 on that side, so we are significantly better than the existing dwelling. That's a pretty close side yard setback in my opinion but um, anyway the house was built in 1930 prior to zoning so it's non-conforming 
The apartment itself, just so we talked about the entrances, there won't be any main entrance to the apartment from the front. The entrance at the front is their mudroom entrance. Uh, the house itself is approximately 20, almost 2,900 square feet. Um, the zoning bylaws allow one third of the habitable finished space, including the basement, to be used to uh, calculate how large an accessory apartment can be. Uh, so that allows us approximately 861 square feet. Um, a thousand is the max, so we're well under a thousand square feet. Um, public sewer, water service, everything's tied into the principal dwelling and that all comes from the street. Um, any questions? I think that covers it. I, oh, I also have, I'm, I'm good at bringing pictures. I have a picture of the rear, because I'm sure you couldn't see it when you were um, there. Um, and also a picture of the side with the screen porch as well. Um, so you can see what the back and side look like. It's hard to see off the front of the street. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mark this time. Um, Mark, you had a uh, some concerns on it. Of course, you, you did write the uh, denial letter, so that's what we usually first go through. See what you're actually just for a correction. Uh, Glenn wrote the denial letter. That's right. Which is okay. You can ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, from the board, I'll start uh, with Eric this time. Okay. So, <coughs> just so I can kind of orient myself. Yes, yes, I know it's difficult. There's a lot no, going on. It's, it's, <laughs> you've done a great job. Um, on the certified plot plan, yes. I see that it looks, I guess I can't quite make out the uh, dimensions here. It, are you just expanding the existing screen porch back? Expanding the kitchen too, so I see you. Okay, okay so um, you'll see, yeah, the 16 by 27.76 is the screen porch, but between it and the uh, you know, the main structure is actually a, it's a very small extension of their kitchen. Okay. Um, I was just, I was so yeah, it's a little confusing, isn't it? Yeah. But well, sometimes these pictures do more damage. Yeah, but I know exactly. Be careful next time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But so in, in terms of the action, because you're asking for two special permits. When is, yes, exactly. So just bifurcating those, the yeah. the addition in the back for the, the screen porch, um, I mean, it's existing uh, legal non-conforming. The existing non-conformity at its worst point is two and a half feet. <laughs> right. Yours, is, you're asking for 14.4. Uh, right. You're not creating any new, or I should say, you're not making what's there any worse. I don't think that the construction that you've proposed here um, would have any sort of negative impact, so I, I, I don't have any issue with that. Uh, in terms of your accessory apartment, I guess I'll just take a stab at going through the performance standards since you called on me first, John. Okay. Right. Um, so we have a series of them. The first one is only one accessory apartment per lot can be created, which I think we've met. The accessory apartment shall have a gross floor area not to exceed the lesser of a thousand square feet or one-third the gross, uh, gross uh, floor plan. 
I am prepared to take uh, ISD's measurements if, if they say your math is right. <laughs> I won't challenge it now that, that Mark's here. We don't have to guess. Yeah. So if he's good, I'm good. Um, at least one of the owners um, of the lot containing the principal single family and accessory apartment shall reside there. You indicated that would be the case. Uh, the accessory apartment and any modifications, the principal single family dwelling on the lot shall be designed so that the appearance of the principal dwelling remains that of a single family dwelling. In my aesthetic uh, interpretation of what you're doing here and opinion, I think you've met that. I don't think that there's uh, a question about you know the character of the house after you've done these renovations. Um, all stairways to the primary entrance to the accessory apartment located on the second or third story of the principal single family dwelling shall be enclosed within interior walls. Doesn't look like that's an issue. Where there are two or more entrances that exist on the front uh, facade of the principal family dwelling, modifications made to such entrances in order to accommodate the special apartment shall result in one entrance appearing to be the principal residence, I'm sorry, the principal entry, and the other entrances appearing secondary. So I think the main entrance in is through the interior, right, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. And the second means of egress is in the back on the side. So, so yeah, actually the main, there's two entrances facing the front, so there's the main existing front door. Okay. We're adding a mudroom entrance to the principal dwelling. For the apartment, okay. the actual entrance is off the side okay. where the driveway is, and the second means of egress is through the screen porch. Okay. Okay. Even though they have a door that goes to the mudroom, that's really not their space. Got it. Um, all motor vehicles owned or maintained by the occupants uh, should be parked uh, off the street in designated driveway. I don't see that there's any issue with that. I mean, and they have actually two driveways, one to the right to the garage for the main dwelling, and then this shared driveway that goes to their neighbor right now. And that is not under an easement. So the question is whether the other neighbor at this point is going to put their own driveway in. It was, you know, it's an old neighborhood. People have been there for a very long time. So this is sort of an agreement driveway. But we're not impacting it anyway. So that's beside the neighbor and the owners as to what they decide to do. But the intent is that Dottie will drive straight up and park next to her uh, her apartment. Um, question for you on that, Nancy. Yes. So I guess, because I'm not sure what's happening with the neighbor to the left of that. Yeah. So you've got this existing driveway. Yes, which correct. has no easement rights. No just, easement rights, correct. I mean, correct. maybe a prescriptive adverse possession. Who knows? It, Who I'm knows sure at this point, yeah. Out. Yeah. I mean, I, I see that it kind of branches off, and then there's a, you know, if it <coughs> goes straight back and it kind of terminates at the end there. Yeah. I mean, are you good, I guess it's the plan to maybe move that over so that the whole thing is on correct. the lot? Yeah, correct. That's what's going to happen. That end will straighten out and go straight. But keep in mind, there is a pretty dramatic change in level. Okay. So from the street, he doesn't have the street, but even from the front, it's 95.5, and by the back, it's uh, 102. So there's quite a elevation change, which is a good thing for um, Jill's mother because now she can enter her apartment pretty much able to get in. She's actually probably my age, so she's but um, that's the intent that it will work out. The dry, I just wanted to point out, but that driveway is shared right now. For whatever reason, never put their own driveway in. So now it's going to be used by um, this, by Dottie. I don't know, but that's something that will be worked out. Okay. Um, I mean, it's on your land. It doesn't it's look right. like they have any issues. Correct. Uh, you know, or claims that no, that's right. exist right now that they, I mean, who knows what they might be able to do. Yeah. But I guess, you know, it's still your land. I, I suppose you just wouldn't have a problem, you know, just passing over it to get back to the, Correct. I guess, the entrance there, so. Correct. We're not blocking that or intending to block it. They may choose to change it themselves onto their property, but that's, that's their prerogative. All right. Um, just continuing with the performance standards, um, both the single family dwelling and the accessory apartment will be connected to public uh, water and sanitary sewer systems, no issue there. 
Um, accessory apartment may not be occupied by more than three people. Um, sounds like it's just one person one right person. now. Yeah, one bedroom. Um, next one doesn't apply because it's not a carriage house or an attached structure. And detached, well, it's actually attached, so I don't think we have to worry about performance standard number K. And I think that that's it. So those are, those are I guess, my only comments. So that's all I got. Sure. Well, I kind of, after reviewing this one, kind of viewed it a little like the previous one we just went through. It was quite straightforward. And uh, I think the addition they're talking about, the accessory apartment they're talking about, as Eric just went through, uh, seemed to comply with all the requirements. And we're not, again, I don't see any creation of any new nonconformity other than those that already exist. So I have no further questions, comments. I'm comfortable. Okay. Robert. Uh, sure. Uh, Nancy, w when did you say this was built? 1930s? 1930s, it said on the assessor's card. Um, built in 1930. Do you have an assessor? Do you want the assessor's card? No. I've got a copy of it if you would like it. We yeah. asked for them, but we didn't get them. So. Yeah, I've, well, yeah. But I, I thought I heard you say originally, yeah. Yeah. Did I not put them in the packet this time? That's terrible. Here, this is it. All right. You're welcome to have it. Yeah, that's the one typically we usually get. For some reason, we didn't get it this time. Ah, I was. And they usually have, uh, yeah, the year built, 1930 or so. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, John, maybe. Yeah, put it in the record. Yeah. I must have forgotten to put yeah. that no in. No problem. There. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we got it. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I kind of looked at it in, in two aspects, in, in that you do need the two special permits on this. Uh, again, I have no issue with the, the back, uh, the screen porch going in, uh, the small addition to your main structure there. Uh, all appears to be within the, uh, you might say, the, the allowed building footprint in that, uh, yeah, let's see. Here. Yeah, you're still 14 feet, but uh, okay. that that, that yeah. jutting the the main structure of the house, which I was surprised when I went by. Yeah, you it, when I first looked at the plot plan, you look at this and you figure it might be drive down, but right, you know, when I go by, it, it shoot up, and yeah. the garage is at yeah. ground level, and exactly. then there is a second story above it. Correct. And that's only two and a half feet at its closest point and the the new addition is going to be 14.4 feet right uh, again this is similar to the previous one you won't be seeing any of the addition from the street at all uh, now when we look at the apartment uh, I think everything has has been met pretty much uh, Eric went over all that I did have a question on the driveway when I was looking at it and the uh, the the person in the apartment is going to have an automobile. Correct. And that will be parked on that left side. Yes. Driveway. Correct. So. And, and that's I'm glad you went over that because yeah. that was a question I had. How, you know how this all works that driveway there, and I was glad you noted that. Because that at the the end of the driveway, where typically that uh, uh, the apartment dweller is going to park, straddles the property line. Correct, and that's going to get pushed. And that's over. fine. Yeah. I mean, you you would just have to work something out, and then correct. If you had, you would present it to us that you know that they are going to be using it because uh, obviously that person to the south uses that driveway to get to access their property. So there might be something there, but I, I think right now, based on what you had said, I would put a condition on this that uh, that the the automobile or the car should be parked completely on the uh, property owner's lot. Ideally, it's going to be parallel to the street to allow for my mother-in-law to you know and uh, exit. It's going to be parallel to Summer Summer Ave. Yes. Or perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna you mean perpendicular? Or? I don't think you want to do that. 
Parallel means along the street. You mean yeah, so if park I'm here. thinking behind the, the oh, apartment. Oh, you're going to have her come in. Turn. turn have around. that. So, oh, oh, behind the turn. Yeah, the unit. And turn behind the yeah, property. Yeah, so that it can pull out. I get so you. Okay, I'm thinking in the front, and I'm saying no, you can't do no, it in the front yard. Yeah. 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 There's a shed there now, and okay. there's plenty of room. So it would be in the backyard. Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds like my And, and that makes property. sense to me, because uh, uh, you yeah. would drive up, make your turn, and then you'd have a to allow to back out and right. come down the driveway right. forward. Right. Right. Yeah. right. I think that'd be a difficult driveway to come down it is. in yeah. reverse. Yeah. You know. We've done it. It's difficult. <laughs> Especially in the winter. Okay. Uh, the other thing, and I don't know if you have any with you, uh, Nancy, is uh, any architectural elevation view of the front, what this apartment's going to look like. Yeah, the and drawing. like we like to look at the, the that we like on, on these apartments, uh, accessory apartments, include? because it's supposed to look like a single family home from the front and stuff. And that's what we like to look at. Yeah. Okay. Then I. It's on yeah, the apartments. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. Yeah. And this door here is that's is, is the mud that's, room. that's the mudroom door yeah. that's going to be part of the main house that that's that correct. goes to. That's not part of the apartment. Yeah. Okay. She can get to her apartment through it oh, if yeah. she wants to, but her entrance is off the side. It's on the side. Is, yeah, is yeah. If you turn the page, you'll see the other okay. side, too. Yeah. Did you want to see that, too? No, I have, I have oh, I package. didn't see it in my packet. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I think I only hit three. There's, there's, there's two. Oh, there were two sets. Yes, the one was showing the oh, calculation. So. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's... No, you didn't hear it. No, oh, here, hear it. you, oh my goodness. You That's all right. No, oh, I saw it. It's fine. Yeah, and this is the side entrance to the apartment. Yeah. So okay. you may have that set. That's, that's yours. <laughs> you might want to take a look. You, you yeah. have that? Yep. Yeah, I didn't get it. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I'll... Those are the questions I had, and it looks now that uh, she's met the uh, they've met the requirements of uh, the addition, the special permit for the addition. I don't see it be any further detriment detriment to the, the neighborhood. And then uh, they appear to have met all the criteria required for an accessory apartment. I see. So, Nick. Yeah, I agree with everything said thus far. I think Eric did a great job summing up the performance standards uh, for the special permit for this accessory dwelling in an S-15 district. And as far as the special permit for the porch, I have no issue with that. That's all I have to add. I have some questions because I don't see a complete presentation of how the front entrance is actually working yet. In as much as in the photo, there is a staircase <clears throat> that is not drawn on the elevation. No, not on the front elevation. That staircase goes up to the front porch. porch. But by the time you get to the mudroom, you're pretty level with the ground. So if you look at the side elevation, um, I just gave my leg. I'm on the front though right now. Turn, turn the page and you'll see the way the, el the grade goes up. Yes, no, I saw that. Yeah, so, so there's not... There's only going to be one or two steps up to the mudroom because the ground is pretty steep. Is that what your question was? I'm sorry. No. Okay. It's that I see two entrances on this building. Correct. So the main entrance is the front porch, which is there now. And then we're creating to the left a mudroom entrance or a side entrance to the main house with a, a half bath associated with it and closet space. So that side entrance is actually the main house entrance. And then the windows you see to the left on the main entrance, the single story here. So this is, this is entrance, second entrance to the main house. It's a mudroom entrance. So when they park up there, they can get in. And then those are windows to the bedroom. And then the side elevation shows the entrance to the apartment. Yeah. So I guess I'm concerned that the design, the way that I'm trying to piece and yep. see it together presents 
two entrances on the front facade. Correct, it does. That look like it's a dual, to me I don't read this as being an entrance to this building, but I, I, drawing the question, the conformity to the bylaw that it needs to have a single entrance in the front doesn't look like it's an entrance to two buildings. So in, in most homes that I design, usually you have a side entrance that leads to a mudroom or a, uh, a secondary way to get into the house that actually everybody uses because that's where you take your boots off, you hang your coats up, and then you proceed into the main house. That's what's been designed here. So when we extend to the side, we're actually creating more space for the main house. It's not space to be used by the apartment, although since there is an entrance right through that I can get into the other part. That's correct, because it's their mother. She wants to be able to come and go into their main house when she wants. She doesn't want to go outside to get back in. So I guess I'm still confused because the language that you're using is saying that the mud entrance is going to become the main entrance. It's my it's interpretation, yeah. Everybody usually, except for the pizza delivery guy, usually comes in the side entrance when you when you are going to a house these days. It's just the way nature is. But the main entrance is the front porch well, still. That's functionality. I guess I'm also yeah. just trying to understand the appearance and the presentation. Sure, sure. And that it feels to me that the neighborhood could view this as two main entrances. Two entrances, one to one house and one to an added on abode. Because we have a very significant staircase which is not represented in the drawings here. It's not on the front elevation. It's missing from the side elevation here. Yeah, that's an existing, yeah, the existing True, right. stairs so that, that go up. Yeah, because it comes from the street. I, I guess what I would say to you is the way I design this is that what looks to the left doesn't look like an apartment at all. No one would know that that's an apartment because it is just simply an extension of the main house. Uh, the apartment is hidden by the door behind it so you know I on the side so I guess it's just you know that it's an apartment but I would say anybody driving by probably wouldn't know that that was an apartment it's pretty consistent with the style and character of the house and the neighborhood most have secondary entrances to their homes in the neighborhood I not all but some do Where are the steps for the mudroom? It's also there's not only plan. yeah, there's only one or two steps up because the ground. So it's outside of the hatched area that's shown, not in the area that's shown. It's just not drawn, it's correct? Just, I don't know that we need one because we're going to be pretty close to ground. By so the, the elevation is represented. Oh, there you go. There's two. Okay, so, so there's, there's two represented steps. here. So I'm, that's what I'm trying. Yeah. Like the yeah, there might be one or two steps up depending on how they grade that at the end. It is hard because it's such a hill, and they go up that hill, and the house levels out halfway up that hill. So, yeah, I am concerned that it does have a duality of looking like a separate entrance to a, a different building, which is further in my mind expressed by. The fact that it is set back, it's a one-story building, and the lead up with what I assume might be the landscaping pathway to get there, being that it's spoken of as being the main entrance to the existing house, but yet you have a very large staircase on this existing porch. Yeah, that's the main entrance. I probably am not using the right terminology. Itself as yeah. two main entrances. So I'm not using the right terminology. The, as you look at the house, the main entrance is definitely the one off the porch. Everybody will read that as the formal, it's, let's call it formal entrance. The side entrance is a less formal entrance. My intent was to say that most people feel comfortable going in a side entrance versus a formal entrance. This is true. It's an understanding of the perception then to the neighborhood, yeah. I would say. Not that anybody in the neighborhood is going to be functionally entering it, so they're not going to know the difference in terms of what's behind door one and two, other than it could have and lend itself to the appearance that it's a duplex with a separate entrance to each building, given the formal nature of the way that the mudroom is presented, 
landscaping coming up to it and the front staircase itself. I guess I don't have at this point a clear description here both of a landscaping plan to understand how that's going to be done with a pathway and, or a no pathway that would make it look like it's a really a secondary entrance and not a new entrance to uh, addition. Uh, so the, the drawings are a little bit leaving me questioning because it's not fully presented. And when I look at the street perspective here, and I imagine that the building is added on, given also the setback, I could feel like it's a whole separate entrance to a duplex. Well, Kyle, I, I will tell you, when you look at the rest of Summer Street, up and down, you'll find a lot of houses that have multiple entrances in the front over time that have, have occurred. Um, I had three concerns, uh, one of which was that, and the only thing I could think of, because we've faced this before, is the side entrance, the mudroom entrance, has got to be more of a plain Jane type of entryway where you would enhance the front door to make it look <coughs> that way. Right. And I guess it... it Just a suggestion. Yeah, I mean, so one thing to keep in mind is that side entrance is set back with a roof over it even further. Six feet, I see that. Exactly. And that's that's what made, made it a little bit more... Um, Acceptable because you don't you don't perceive it that way. How long right. across the street you have two others that are a little bit right. more. Yeah. So and, and it's even more than six feet because it's six feet to the face of the addition and the edge of the roof, but the door itself sits back another four feet because it's a covered porch. So it even from a shadow line, it's a minor little porch compared to the main porch with the big stairs that go up to it. So, and it's also treated like it is in set, and right now I'm showing vertical siding instead of horizontal siding. So it does show that it's sort of like that back entrance off of a, you know, off of a, a structure that you typically see in most homes. Um, I told you I had three. <laughs> that was the least of the three. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, the second was the actual driveway that uh, has been brought up already. Um, Bob brought it up and I think Eric brought it up yep. also. Um, it, again, if the, if the neighbors next door uh, are going to use that, um, as I said in the first hearing, and you've been at this long enough, that unless there is something in writing uh, in agreement, um, this doesn't this doesn't fit the bill. Correct. Um, you're going to have to exclude that person from using this driveway because we don't know what happens down the road. Right. So um, I would think that something in there would be a condition that a an agreement would be put together and um, uh, uh, registered in the. The registry of deeds so that future owners down the road there's there's not going to be a question about that i mean right now accessory apartments are great we don't know how long an accessory apartment is going to last that's just what it is it's accessory and if you sell the house the new owner's got to have to come in and verify to the building inspector that all the criteria have been met so mark is going to get it back in his lap again but I think because parking is a major aspect of the performance criteria, you need to address that. And I don't know how to get that into the final decision. Okay, now the first one, the one I had the most difficulty with. I don't see your calculations. <laughs> um, and, and when I looked at it, um, on the existing portion of it, um, you didn't have any calculations. You mentioned that part of the basement was part of your calculations re to reach the 800. Yes. So on the the one sheet that has the um, existing area, yeah, it's the those sheets that were just the plans that were shaded. Ah, okay. That's where the calculations are located. 
But now you, you mentioned, because we're taking the calculations from the existing structure right, right now. Correct. Tell me how you figured out that you had 2,700. Right. So it's the existing structure and, and the extension, because that becomes the main body of the house. So that's so the first floor is the extension of the kitchen and the mudroom becomes one calculation for the first floor. So um, of course I don't have my glasses. Um, and then the second, and I, I call that out underneath, um, total floor existing, ugh, I don't have my glasses on, I apologize. 900 and something, I, I, the bigger drawings have it better. Uh, the basement floor, and this is also, the assessor's, actually the assessor's number is higher. Mm -hmm. So this is a little lower than uh, on the existing building, including the basement. That's finished down there. I took out part of the utility space. For some reason, I think they, assessors, must have included the whole utility space. Uh, we we already know we've been through this so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You and can't what's on the, the assessor's, assessor's card and not right. is not accurate. Correct. That's why I recalculated it myself to make sure that it, there was some accuracy. But it made me feel better that I was less than the assessor's department rather than more. So uh, the basement, the it's hard. But this is a mud room off of the garage that's finished. This is utility space so it has heating and so I, I took that as not even though it's semi finished I didn't include that in the calculation in the basement but these are all finished rooms there's a bathroom a laundry room mud room and living space that's the basement all finished and heated the second floor was pretty straightforward actually it was the entire structure is all finished and used and then and including over the garage there's there's space uh, closet and a bedroom and then the main house is pretty straightforward. And then I added the small extra space for the kitchen that we're adding and the mudroom space that we're adding. Because that space is for the main house. I'm showing a door there because they want to allow her to come in and out, but it's not her space. That's open to the main house. So those are the calculations, and I, I don't have, I, I'm sorry, my, my eyes are bad, but the first floor existing I show is 986, and then I added the new, which became 212, I think, square feet, so the total was 1267 on, this, on the first floor. Do you see how I broke that out so you could see the existing, what's going to be new for the main house, and that gets me the total for the first floor of existing. Of, of the house that uh, uses the calculations. No, you did not include the existing screen porch, nor did you no. include the uh, proposed new screen porch. I did not, no, no. I, and the reason for that, Glenn <coughs> and I have been having strong difficulties as to what is included and what isn't included. And we've kind of agreed at this point that anything that isn't heated or has walls does not get included in the calculations. So the screen porch wouldn't be included one way or the other. So they were not part of this calculation for that reason. And I think in the performance criteria, I think it was. It says walls and living. I it Yeah, it needs to be, as we all know, there needs to be some discussion on these bylaws to try and hone in a little bit closer to what the intent is for some of it. We've had that discussion. <laughs> and, and the other section of that was in B uh, where it says it's one third of the gross floor area of the princ principal single family dwelling on the lot. Correct. Which means basically the existing. You're adding into that the proposed addition. And I know it comes back because I've had this discussion so many times with, with Glenn uh, since the new bylaw was adopted. Um, technically, 
what you're doing is you're saying I'm coming in um, to get the uh, well we have two requests uh, from you for waivers one is the for the sun porch correct um, uh, screen porch yeah screen porch and the other one is for the accessory apartment the screen porch is all by itself when you put in when you put in the accessory apartment uh, with the new bylaw the question is well technically you need to put on the addition leave out the leave out the uh, the kitchen right. and then after it's done come back again all over again and do it correct and the re and the justification is that technically if you <coughs> follow the letter of the law that's what you're supposed to do and if if this is the way that we're going to work with attached accessory apartments we need to get it into the bylaw to fix it correctly so that there is no question of how it's being interpreted <coughs> because this board has always tried to follow the same suit over and over and over as cases come in and since that bylaw is put in 50 percent of our cases have been accessory apartments so let's get it straight i don't know when it's coming up but i'm the warrant is already set for april so it's not going to come up until the fall and through the summer we'll probably get another 10 or 12 cases coming in but i i need to know as one member of the board how we're going to react to that and Mark, if you and Glenn need to get together to figure out how this is going to work, that's fine with me. But right now, I have a problem with that. But in lieu of exactly where you're going and all this stuff is done, I can't see it coming back and forth. But it's got to get fixed. Uh, I mean, CPDC believes that this is small potatoes. But it's not small potatoes when you're adding down the road. Forget about now, because everybody knows what's happening now. It's when the house is sold or when something else happens. Um, and that accessory apartment is no longer in the family type of thing and you can't control it. You're renting it out. All, all the rest of the stuff that goes along, it makes for the building commissioner on a, a very difficult time. So we're trying to include all that together. So those are the three issues that I had. I can get by the first one with the with the fact that they, well, the one that I mentioned, the one I least that Kyle brought up. Uh, I can get past that if you modify the doorway in the front and make sure that it's more prominent. Uh, the second one, the driveway, I can get past that provided you put something in writing and get it registered for the protection of not only the owner but for the neighbor because right now neighbors are fine. Yeah. But what happens if they sell theirs and you get a new neighbor? And the neighbor says it's been used for 27 years so don't tell me that I, that's not part of my driveway. So down the road I'd like to see some of that stuff fixed. <clears throat> so that's the only comments that I had, guys. Okay. Yeah. Now, go ahead. I didn't have a problem with the okay. areas, John. Uh, you know, as you say, looking at her calculations and, and the way things work, and obviously she is. They are, and, and, and it isn't just a screen porch. Maybe that's a misnomer or something, because it is. They are extending out another two or three feet. Yeah. Right. To for the kitchen. For yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and so when you start taking an outside wall down to do that, that that's yeah. that's kind of major. So anyway, that that's it's an addition and a screen porch. Right. And then over to the side, the the actual apartment is right to here. Then the, it comes along here. That's the mudroom that goes with the main house. It comes along like that. You know. Yeah. They they could add that in the front and do this addition you might say by itself and not right. the apartment right and if they did that that is the area that they would have yeah, and that's the way I look at it and, right. and that's what she's using for her calculations yep. and, and I don't have an issue with that at all with the calculations okay. you know. anybody else okay. Okay. excuse me so in terms of the driveway if I'm understanding what you're suggesting at least as a uh, germinating condition for the special permit 
you're looking for something recorded. But I, from what I see... Well, you're the attorney, so well, you need to tell I, well, us. Well, I'm just clarifying, and I want to be clear. I'm not the petitioner's attorney. I'm not offering any legal <laughs> advice or anything like that. But I don't know what they would be able to produce because the driver is already on their land. Do you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't... I mean, who would they get it from? But themselves? Do you know what I mean? So... Would you be comfortable if we had a condition that parking was restricted to the left side of the house? Only because I, I don't know what you could get signed. That's, that's you know what, what I saying? would suggest. Like, I, mean, I, I, I mean, if you do, I mean, I, let me know. I'm just, I just don't know what the other side would sign because the, the land that you're talking about is already theirs. Yeah. That, that's exactly what I would suggest is we put a condition in in this. Uh, you might say a fourth condition there to our standard ones that... Uh, access and parking for the accessory so apartment will take place wholly on the petitioner's lot, period, on the property owner's lot. And just leave it at that and let them straighten out where, you know, okay. if they want to let the other person use it or if they don't, but just, you know, so we're on record and it is a condition and it's recorded <coughs> that access and parking for the accessory apartment shall take place wholly on the uh, property owner's lot. Leave it at that. That's what I would suggest. Do you want to specify what side? Um, uh, or does it matter? I mean, I guess... Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I would I say... I think it on the, be on that one side. The left on, side. on the left side. On the south side. Uh, south general, south side. And generally, yeah. and maybe this is what you do, generally as shown on the plot plan. I mean, yeah. fortunately, it looks like you guys have two curb cuts, right? I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. pre-existing yeah. before you had to get the permits for them. Right, exactly. But I mean, you know, you've got them there, and why not use them, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. All right, fine. Those are, okay. That was my only comment. Mark, how do you feel about this whole discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Well, since since, you, <laughs> since you're heir apparent now and following forward, um, no, I mean I, I hear your um, frustration with the way the uh, the gross square footage is listed and and how their how their calculations are made. That's a good word. How the calculations are made to to suit their needs, which is fine, um, so, but it has to be adjusted. And I mean I have no problem how this is proposed and. Mm. Okay. But something needs to happen in the future. Okay. Any other comments from the board members? I don't have a hang up over the dual appearance of yeah. two entries. Uh, it's clear to me that the main entrance is over the porch into the front. Okay. The side entrance is set back. You said you're going to put a little roof over it? Yeah, it's part of so the it's a main roof over the whole structure. And then the door itself actually sits in. So it's a porch, but it's the same roof across. So as I'm, I don't have my elevations anymore, but if you look at the front elevation, uh, the door actually insets into the face of the addition four feet. So it, it'll appear as if it's really a side entrance that's set back. I'm not uncomfortable with that at all. See, it's yeah. six, six feet here, right. and then another and goes four, feet back another four. four feet to where yeah. the door is. So it'll be actually under shadow and it's not I don't have that hang up with it. As John mentioned, there's a lot of other houses right. and properties on that street that have two entries. Right, exactly. And I think uh, if it were faced... The driveway, the condition of the, the Bob and, 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 uh, and Eric were talking about, it, it sounds like a responsible approach to that thing in the square footage. Uncomfortable with what you did. Anybody else? I'll open the public section of the uh, hearing this evening. Um, I want to see two people in my room unless somebody can <laughs> 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 say something. Did you comment at all? <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> Okay, then I'll close the subject matter of the public hearing for this case. All in favor? I mean, no issues. I, you know, in the, in the past we haven't done that, but at the 40B, apparently, uh, <laughs> you know, every point of order has to it. So, I, you know, I don't know what to say about it anyway. <laughs> used to it. Um, well, hearing nothing, um, I'll take uh, a motion from somebody. 
I'll be glad to do it. Now, uh, I move to uh, grant the petitioner uh, Daniel Damari, right, uh, a special permit. And we, I'll do it in two. We have to do it in two, two. special permits on this. A special permit uh, uh, under Reading zoning bylaws. Uh, I believe this will. Hmm, let's see which one is for the, the first two. Yeah, I think the it's first five, two, five, three, two, four, five, yeah. four, seven. Yeah. That's right. I thought five, uh, five, three, two, and uh, four, five point four seven uh, to demolish the existing screen porch at the rear of the house in order to expand the kitchen and to add a new screen porch uh, to the uh, existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 77 Summer Avenue, Reading, Mass. Uh, generally in conformance with a uh, certified plot plan prepared uh, by John D. Sullivan, uh, professional engineer, uh, titled Plot Plan of Land, 77 Summer Avenue, Reading, Massachusetts, dated January 17th, 2019. And in general conformance with the relevant architectural plans prepared by Toomey Design, uh, and those are listed in, those are dated January 22nd, 2019, and sheets number one through nine. Right. And you have a second one. Um, eight, eight. Which is the actual. Well, those are the, yeah, those are the. Uh, the actual uh, accessory property. Uh, existing structure. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make reference to the same thing to the uh, plans also by Toomey Design, dated uh, January twenty uh, second, two thousand nineteen. One, one, two, and three of three, and all under and uh, these uh, this special permit is subject to the following conditions. Petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. And the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with all as built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And as built plans showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. And I don't believe we need the fourth condition on this particular motion. Because uh, this is more, this is the construct the the, the uh, expansion, the, the, the addition to the house, not the accessory apartment I'm making the motion for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it, just those those three special uh, conditions right now added to the addition on that. Do we hear a second? Second. No seconds. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. okay. Second motion. And uh, now the second motion would be I move to grant the petitioner uh, Daniel Damari uh, a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws Section 7.32 uh, to create an accessory apartment attached to an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 77 Summer Avenue in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, as shown is on the certified plot plan prepared by John D. Sullivan, uh, professional engineer, uh, Wuben Mass, dated uh, January 17th, 2019, entitled Plot Plan of Land, 77 Summer Avenue, Reading, Mass. And in accordance with the architectural design plans prepared by Toomey Design, uh, we have two sets here, and I'll uh, note both sets. Uh, 
Uh, sheets number one, two, and three of three, dated 122.19. And sheets, uh, and sheets uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine of nine, dated 122.19, prepared by Toomey Design, architectural plans. Uh, with the conditions again, uh, that the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans for the accessory apartment prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. And the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure or accessory apartment shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And three, as built plan showing the completed construction should be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit for the accessory apartment. And number four, that access, access driveway and parking for the accessory apartment shall be located on the Southerly side of the lot, wholly on the property or the of the property owner's lot, uh, wholly within the confines of the property lines. We hear a sec second for that one. Can we second that too. Any discussion? Seeing none. I'm ready for the vote. All in favor? Five zero zero zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, let me stamp these in. See the larger size that you have in the actual folder is, is one through nine? Yes, correct. Case number what? Oh, 19 dash 04. Somebody had the, um, put this back in the, in the actual uh, copy of our one through three. I can, I, I can take one. One through nine? No, I, I, I have the oh, one you through got nine. The, so the, the one through three. three yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to need them to refer to one. Yeah, I know that. that. Yeah. I got, I got one now.
she said. Last case we have for us this evening is um, case number 19-05. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Stuckman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Old Street, in Massachusetts, on Wednesday, the 6th of March, 2019, 7 p.m. On the Application of Integrity Building Design Incorporated on behalf of Rich and Judy Swanson, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.3.2, to construct a new second story addition with a non conforming side yard setback to an existing non conforming dwelling on the property located at 352 Summer Ave in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear that the testimony given before 
the board this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, I'm Dana, Mc Dana McKeel from Integrity Building and Design on behalf of Rich and Judy Swanson. Um, as, you guys, as you just stated, we're here um, for a non-conforming lot. That, um, it's based on a side setback on just the left side of the property. Um, what we'd like to do is construct and the, remove the existing deck that's on the back of the house and construct a two-story addition. And basically, um, this elevation um, right here is really the extension of the second floor. Um, there's no, and then there's also a first floor addition on the left side of the property that would only be one story. So in keeping, the addition really keeps with what really is here. It just juts out the back of the house. Um, it's to create a family room, on mud room, and bathroom on the first floor, and then a bedroom extension on the second floor. Um, the, and that's, we're not going any more non-conforming on that left side of the property. The addition is staying, you know, in parallel with the garage and the property line. That's really it. So, take any questions or comments? Or? I guess at the same time, the 25-foot maximum uh, ratio floor, uh, area coverage, it's only at 22%, so it's not... That's not, um, not, there's no issues there as well. Mark, you wrote the uh, denial letter on this one. Um, your input? Well, based on the denial letter, you can see that I mentioned that it's uh, non conformant due to the side setback in the lot area, the existing lot. Um, also, what's not mentioned in my denial letter is non conformant due to frontage. But um, it's just a typical extension of a non-conforming structure. Okay. Uh, questions from board members? Um, I review a bit. I have none. Nick. Um, I just comment that I don't think it's any more non-conforming, you know, exacerbating the existing non-conformity. I don't see it being any more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, I don't give it. Uh, yeah, s similar to a couple of the other cases we've heard tonight, it's a non-conforming uh, lot. We're talking about here in the S15 uh, zoning district, I think non-conforming structure uh, based on its uh, closeness to the side setback here on uh, northerly, northwesterly property line on that, which is eight feet. The addition is going to be seven, uh, excuse me. Uh, 7.8 is what is Eight feet to the addition, 7.8 feet yeah. to the yeah. existing. So we're not increasing the non-conformity at all. And again, like the other members uh, that have noted, I do not see that this would be uh, substantial, uh, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's already uh, exists there. So I'm comfortable with it. Okay. Sorry. Um, I was going to say what Bob said. It's not too dissimilar to the previous two. It's kind of, it's kind of straightforward. But, uh, the plot plan, as I see it, was not the kind of plot plan we normally experience seeing. It's, but it's, it's, but, it, but it's, <laughs> I have no problem right. being able to interpret it such to make a decision. Yeah, it perfect. is stamped so and it's stamped and everything else is certified. It's so. noted as a certified yeah. plan. Yeah. So I don't have any real problem. I don't have any problem. Okay. Eric. The only question I have is uh, we're saying that it's legal non-conforming, but I don't see anything about when it was built. And for it to be legal non-conforming, it has to be there prior to the issuance of, you know, the zoning regulations. Mm. And again, we don't have the assessor's card here, so we have no idea what the background is. I mean, the assessor's card that we have 
That's really doesn't tell you. Give us any you know, the materials that we usually yeah. look at. Yeah. Oh, you had is, is that this one? Yeah. Okay. Is it in 1930s? Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, usually it, it, it'll say right in here. Yeah, yeah, 1930. Wonderful. So. Thanks, Karen. That takes care of it. Well, <laughs> sorry. I, we're, we're oh, so new guy, new guy here. I'm sorry. I, 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 it's my third yeah. one in, in the last two months, and I'm stopped trying to it get into town. And I apologize. Yeah, we know the. I got to go to Littleton uh, the end of the month. Not so. necessarily gospel, but uh, it, it. Hey, it's something it's to hang our hats on. What we have so. written. Close yeah. Enough. And it's, I don't uh, have a time machine. I'm <laughs> gonna go with the assessors. Uh, it certainly beats. Uh, what was the, when zoning come in, John? 1946. 1942. Well, with that said, Mr. Chairman, I, I have no questions or problems with the project as proposed. <laughs> okay. Well. We don't know if any, I, I, we, we assume that there was no additions put on the property. Uh, we don't have the cart in front of us. Right. It's very difficult to, to, to see that. But um, I, I, I looked at it uh, very similarly. I mean, you're within the setback uh, of the existing uh, non-conformity already. Um, so asking for that. Uh, is in compliance. I don't see, uh, again, as was mentioned by the other members of the, of the board, it's any more detrimental to the uh, uh, to the neighborhood than exists right now. Uh, you're going back. You're not going. You're not going out front. You are going to the side. But uh, so I don't. I don't have any major problems with that at all. As presented. Any other comments from the board? Now I'll open the public portion of the uh, hearing. And unless there is <laughs> <laughs> nobody wishes to speak, <laughs> I'll close the uh, subject matter of the public to the public hearing. Um, and then I'll ask if there is an, anybody who wishes to make a uh, motion uh, as presented before us on section uh, 7.3.2. Actually, you had checked off two sections on the, uh, on the application. One was the appeal from the decision uh, slash order of the building inspector which, as you presented now, it appears that you're not looking to follow through on, or are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Since I'm new here, I, I did what the bill inspector told me to check off. So I, I don't know. What did I do? What box are you saying? Or what, what did I like? You, you appealed by denial, and you requested a special permit. And that's why he's here. It's well, because it's coming before the board. Oh, yeah. He's in essence, yeah. overturning that. Opinion. That's why he was denied. And because he has to come here. Yeah. yeah. Right. I got a denial letter from the bill inspector because I couldn't get a building right. permit right. because I wasn't conforming. Or well, the which, lot's not conforming. Yes. Which which you understood when you came here. And that's why yeah. you checked out the special permit in accordance with it, which is part of Mark's letter. Um, so you... But by checking that off, you're first asking... Uh, t for the board to uh, overturn the building inspector's decision. Overturn the building inspector's decision. <laughs> Why can't he not with well, the you can, well, I'm just to that point. Okay, now. I want to withdraw that. <laughs> okay, sorry. I apologize. Like I said, I, 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 I don't think you need it. I mean, I yeah. don't know. If it states in his letter that the, the reason he denied it was because he needs a special permit, and that's what he's here for. But it's checked off and it was advertised. It's clean. He's so he's if, if clean. you're asking for withdrawal of, of the... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so that's thanks. the first thing that we'll accept and move on. And then the second will be the actual special permit. So do I have somebody who's willing to put forth a motion? Good job. Okay. 
So you do both the withdrawal and then the mm -hmm. special permit? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'll move to accept the petitioner's request to, uh, I guess, uh, withdraw his appeal from the decision slash order of the building inspector. Second. Second. Move second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. And then the second motion. And I will make a second motion. <coughs> excuse me. That the board approve the petition um, of Integrity Building and Design on behalf of Rich and Judy Swanson, who seek a special permit uh, pursuant to Reading Bylaw Section Seven Point Three Point Two in order to construct a new two-story addition with a non-conforming side yard setback at the property located at 352 Sumrav, Reading, Massachusetts. Um, as depicted on a certified plot plan dated January 25th, 2019, prepared by David E. Ross Associates and stamped by Mark K. Wheeler, professional land surveyor and as further depicted in design renderings pages one through four dated january 31st 2019 and prepared by integrity design um, conditions on this special permit um, is conditioned upon the following the petitioners shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. The petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. I have a second for that one. Second. No, seconds. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Five zero zero again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yep. Is that everything? Yep. Now. That was close. Question. What was, what are you looking for for the plot plan? I'll pass on to the engineer. Um, you, you mentioned that you were, it's not normal or what wasn't, what, what is it, what is it? I mean, I'm from Acton and so the, the engineers from Harvard. It's been quite some time ago. No, that was just by very recently. I think the preparation thing is really bad. I don't know. Well, the plot plan was just done. Last two months, three months. It's stamped. It's just an odd setup with the proposed addition to the side. Yeah, we were just, uh, I was trying to blow up that factor of what. Yeah. That, that, and this is the existing conditions. So yeah, that's, that's, exactly. There's not, a board, there's, there's not a border on well, it. Okay. T typically, I think it's just the registry of deeds. Okay. You would see okay. requirements by the registry, okay. and so these the would not be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's an example of one that's yeah. typically just going to color in the proposed addition. Okay, gotcha. I mean, it's not wrong. It's just what yeah. we used to. That's yeah, right. No, and that's why I just want to pass it on to them so that they're way there because I, I don't know how much they do in this town either, but I just I just wanted to make sure that we we'll send it to them so he knows what they do. Oh, yeah, no, and I appreciate it. No, no. <laughs> When did you guys pass your um, accessory uh, building glass? Did that just get happened in the last two years, or um, been around that you keep kicking well, the tires? I think that was about two or three years. Two or three ago years ago. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good luck. Accessory November, Good luck. November seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. In that. Oh, I've been doing this business for thirty years. Yeah. And twenty-five years ago, I did one in Lexington. It was oh yes. Like yeah. Lexington finally had a high one system. Right. It's. It was. You had seven fifty. That was it. No matter how big your house was or what, you could do an accessory building for seven fifty. And of course, back then it was same same issue. What happens when that person dies? 
and now the person's going to come in and buy somebody buys it, or the people that were living there is now renting it off to somebody else, and then the neighbors are going to get up in arms, and it's just it's just an ugly situation. And like in this sense, you know, I can understand your frustration, and I've done them in Stowe, and I've done them in different towns, and each town has their just nuances of it. It was interesting to hear you guys have that 30% 30 30 of what is in the square footage is can't exceed 1,000 square feet. So at least you're trying to, I did one in Stowe that was the size of the house. It was, I mean, they had plenty of land and stuff like that. But, but it is 1,000 square feet. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's, you know, but in Stowe they didn't have it. And that's was probably 10 or 15 years ago. And so I built a, it was 24 by, I think it was. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a good size structure, but but it was on four acres of land, and you know it was in keeping with the house, and they had no problem with it. But yet, there was still, although, yeah, they, they didn't have any problems with it. Mm -hmm. Just it's just an interesting in each. I've done one in Weston, I've done one in Wellesley, I've done in Stowe, Lexington. So it's just it's just amazing, you know, um, each town and how they have to handle this, and especially in your town, we've got. Such tight lots and tight areas, and you know, again, you just you just passed it two years ago, so that's interesting that it's that short of a time. I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's accessory buildings in this town that have been around forever, and they put the kitchen in after you leave or and stuff like that. So who said that? No, I, I didn't say that. I would right, never. We're do, gonna go. Thank I you. I never do such a thing. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mark, I got all those notes you gave me, so I'll give you an updated plan with all that structural stuff. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Hey, here's your. Oh, thank you. Stamp stamp. So now I just gonna bring this to the clerk's office to have her stamp it, and then or can I just get this recorded? Is this all I need? Yes, but you need to check with Mark uh, to come in and get this process started. Go to Mark next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. We appreciate the appeal period too, right? Yeah. So we'll have to file the decision once yeah. we so get it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So this doesn't give me my 14. I so I got 14 days, Plus then 20. 20 days. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> yeah. Before you know it. <laughs> But, but I'm trying to tell the other two people. Yeah. <laughs> well, that architect must know already. She seems like she's been. Yeah, before. she does. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, before us. Yeah, 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 so, so. um, but I see you, Mark, tomorrow type thing or in the next couple of days first, or does it even matter? You, you can wait for the decision, but I mean, you can get started. You just can't. He can, he can tell you what to do. Okay, I'll go talk to Mark. I'll talk to Mark. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Yeah. Good you can start construction, but the added sort of risk appears. We've got some minutes before, but I've got a question for you. Um, are these new? Is this something new from the assessor's department? So, assessing does not give us the property record cards anymore for whatever reason. They've changed their procedure, limiting paperwork, new staff, etc., whatever it is. So, I got that from the town GIS today. I can search up the lot, which allows me to view the property record card. So, I just printed it from there. We're going to start, I guess, because you guys, it's, I see the need for it, seeing when the house is built. So um, we're going to start, hopefully, asking, assessing ourselves. If not, I mean, record. if not, I'll come in and I'll go upstairs and get one copy. I mean, doesn't that not suffice for what you need? No. Okay. Huh? No, we need to chart the history of it. So, like, like, like when an yeah. addition yeah. went on, mm -hmm. or something like when that. Okay. Real, Some of those we, details. We like the, gotcha. It used to, used to attach uh, uh, a note on it when other permits were pulled. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you knew when additions were done. Is is this garage legal or wasn't mm -hmm. it? Did you pull a permit for when this? Okay. Mm -hmm. changed upstairs and I did ask for those, they don't, they just don't do them the same anymore. It's more along the lines of what you're getting now. Well, 
no, I don't know what you no, 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 it's not, that's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Example, the, built, the house was built in, in, uh, in 1860. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what, we don't know what has transpired. We've had some very contentious yeah, issues over the last year, and the only way we could get to the bottom of it was the assessor's card. They can't destroy those. Those have to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So we want a copy of it, period. Okay. If we so can't like get essential. a copy of it. Yeah, like mm -hmm. When I did, I, uh, before even, uh, before they stopped coming, the, the few times that I did ask for them, they weren't, they were different than what you were used to getting anyways. Even the abutters list that we get, it's different than what we used to get before. So I don't know what, what else changed upstairs, but something else changed so that everything is different, the paperwork, the process, everything. I don't know how much. I'll, I'll, I'll follow it up. I'll they talk to Victor, right. too. They don't do the Freedom copies. of Information Act mm -hmm. for every problem. Hey, right. <laughs> they can deny copies of those old records to anybody else, but for the zoning boards, it's unacceptable. We must have those copies. Okay. okay. Huh? I'll talk to Victor. And it's non-negotiable. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, and it, until Gene... Right. If Gene <laughs> can't make that decision, then uh, I'll come in and on behalf of the board, and I'll go to the town manager. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, we need those cards. Okay. The <coughs> It'll do. Okay. I'll yeah. get them. <laughs> okay. I don't um, think we need the abutter list, do we? Yeah, the abutter's list. We don't need so. that. We can that paper. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> we don't <laughs> trade them. <laughs> <That's laughs> <problems. laughs> just, just, just to review. 40A says the abutters list must contain the following. The abutter, the abutters, the abutter to the, the property in question to the north, south, east, and west. If it's across the street, the abutter to those abutters, and the abutters to the abutters on the same street. It usually involves a total of maybe 15 notices that have to go out within 300 feet. 300. So they take a circle, draw 300 feet, and everybody within 300 feet gets a copy of it. We don't need a copy of that to go out to everybody. But if the town wants to do that, fine. We don't care. <laughs> More paper. So, do you guys <laughs> need the these cards? engineered assessing maps? Do we? I don't really. Well, the larger map, yeah, to locate where the property is. Absolutely. I know when I'm going to go see it or something like that. This is, this is 11 by 17, right? Yeah. Right. The 11 those, by 17s work for you? Those are helpful. Okay. Those, those are helpful. You don't need a 24 by 36 like of this. I think, I think what John said is the list of people I really Right, need. right. So, this is from the engineering department. That we get separately I'll from the assessor. Yeah. 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 Right there, yes. Yeah. I get pictures of the streets, yeah. see the building, what the existing conditions are, satellite view. But I guess the, the question about the map from engineering is the size. This is the 11 by 17 size. There's been discrepancy this, this week or last, mm -hmm. week, last about week about it needs to be. 24 by 36. You don't need that for this. No. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing that would be good. <laughs> um, not the 11 by well, the 11 by 17 might 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 be okay, but the bigger one is better, and that is a zoning map of the town of Reading, because the zones change, and when you're looking at it. The abutting zone could be next to the property, which we don't see because it's not on the certified plot plan that we get this part of it. So going from business A to business B or business B to residential or to the industrial, we don't see any of that stuff. Yeah. And it's good to have, I've, I've always used, but I don't get it anymore. I think plot plans should depict I get a zoning, zoning lines. Yes. I thought I had. It's an old, it's an old it, it might be. Exactly. That's in. Yeah. Yes. Usually it does, right? Oh, yeah. It has to. Yes. When they were updated. There's like yeah. a line right next this to the This is what it's called. Like different one. Right. I thought yeah. they usually yeah. did, but. Yeah. Okay. Huh? We it updated. Okay. 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 I, that's I 11 by 17. Those. I have those. <laughs> Some people back because it hasn't said like it's 15 and stuff like that. You can print it off the town website. Right. Yeah. So, 
if there's a zone line <laughs> close by, it should state this flooding property is S20, this one is I can probably tell you that all day. Oh, you can put that right out at home. Oh, more well, sure I can, yeah. but I'm not gonna. Every time you every time you have a case, you go to the case, you leave leave the other stuff if you if you save it. You leave it with the rest of the paperwork in the folder or you dump it and you have to reprint it out all over. Yeah, yeah, it just takes time. time. <laughs> yeah. It's not just the town. It's like oh. I bought a new snowboard this year. I asked for the owner's manual. Oh, go online and get it. Yeah. What do you mean go online? Just That's give me it. Oh, we don't have them anymore. Oh, so <laughs> I get frustrated with that. Uh, you want to know this? Find your rage. I am. It frustrates me that you can't get the owner's manual when you buy something. You're right. Right. Young guys, right. young guys over here. They don't <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm on the board of discovering <laughs> that one as well. Boy, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have some minutes before us this evening. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. That's my bedtime. Can you make sure? Only one second. We have to verify anyway. with the envelopes yeah, and stuff. So. Just be, um, um, right. First one is uh, December the fifth. Fifth, December 5th. <laughs> hey, I didn't have a lot myself. You got I'm them in your prior packet. Yeah, the prior packet. The prior packet. Oh. I said, what happened? Well, I have mine, but I don't remember that. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just on 12 months. I time. just had a what did you have couple of things. Uh, Kristen, we're going through the minutes now. Uh -huh. and okay, December 5th. December 5th. And it, it, this is just a little grammar. I, I would put, like, on the start of these cases, zoning board will hold. I, can we change that to held? We held a public meeting. This is this is the minutes. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. We held a public meeting, and this is what we discussed. And we'll go through that. Mm -hmm. And let's see, on that case now, page three. About a third of the way down, after the vote, 500, Jerima Redfern, Colette, Hagstrom, and Pernas, you got on a motion by Mr. Redfern, seconded by Mr. Hagstrom, the Zoning Board of Appeals moved to grant the applicant's request for a withdrawal without, without prejudice. prejudice. Can we put, yeah, without prejudice, mm -hmm. and this was for the variance request. Mm -hmm. So if we can get withdrawal without prejudice for the variance request for case 1815. And when we get to case uh, 1821 down, if we get, again, change the uh, will hold to held. We held a public hearing instead of we're going to hold one. And I think that was it on, uh, nope, nope. So I got... Uh, Let's see. Mm -hmm. This is on page five. About the middle of the page, we start the paragraph with Mr. Latham. See that? Okay, Mr. Latham asked about removing the overhand to the secondary door. I think that's supposed to be overhang. Mm -hmm. yeah. Overhang, right? That's yeah. the one on... Yeah. Uh, yeah. They were doing the accessory apartment, the two doors. Exactly, yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So it's overhang, and that's what that's what I had on that. That's all I had. Anybody else? No. No. Motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of uh, December twelfth, or excuse me, December fifth, two thousand eighteen, as amended. Second. Second. All in favor. Six zero zero. And now we get the twelfth. Next one was uh, on the twelfth. Right. And all I had on this night was just if we could change the tense again. Instead of uh, mm -hmm. zoning board appeals will will hold held held a public hearing, continuance of a public hearing in mm -hmm. this case he held a continuance. And that's all I had that month.
I didn't have anything. Motion to accept the uh, the minutes of uh, twelve twelve. So mm -hmm. okay. As amended. As amended. We have a second. Second. Bob, oh, second. Okay. No, uh, you weren't there for that one, so it's five zero zero. Mm. And then the last one. Again, this is at the. Do you want to say held again? Yep. Yep. So again, you might want a members present on this one. It looks like there's. Uh, this is at the senior center. I don't think Kyle was there no. for at the senior center no. for this, and I think it was Eric. Things. Eric was missing, but the subject oh, matter he was, was discussed here. Ah, okay. That was the so, night he was out, and then right. the, uh, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't right. open the meeting. Right. This is for the 110? Yeah. 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 yeah, I was there. Yeah, Were you? Were. Okay. 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 Uh, but he, he yeah. couldn't vote. He couldn't That's what it was. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I was here. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Sure. And uh, then on this, if we can just change, uh, instead of will hold it, yeah. Continuance, let's tell the continuance. And I think at the bottom of page one, last paragraph, it says Mr. Heap explained that the applicant will need two of four. I think that should be three. Ah. We'll need three or four voting members. Okay. I think. Mm -hmm. That sounds right. It's, it's restated elsewhere as three or four. Yeah. Okay. Let's pick up the answer. Paragraph the second page. <coughs> We got a four instead of three. Okay, uh, motion to accept the subject matter of uh, one quick thing, John. 19. Uh, so the Mullen rule is actually with an I N. I only know this because it's a rule near and dear to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> On this board, Mullen <laughs> versus the town of Brewster. <laughs> 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 You want to put that in? <laughs> I just, it's in, it's, they reference it twice, I just figured. Yeah. And it writes, for okay. the sake of consistency. <laughs> Town Brewster, huh? 1983, I think. <laughs> L-L-I-N. We're here uh, motion to accept as amended the minutes of uh, 1 10 2019. So moved. Second. Second. Eric seconds. All in favor? Oh, you can't vote on that one. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Kind of <laughs> He was there? Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any other business before the board this evening? Um, um, just a quick update on staff. Um, I'm sure you all know Julie Mercier, our community development director. She is moving on to the town of Lexington, oh. and Tuesday will be her last day. So we'd like to wish her farewell and the best. It's a tough loss for Can you us. Say tomorrow? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday, Tuesday, last Tuesday. day. Uh -huh. um, so if you'd like to stop in, say hello and goodbye, please do. Um, yep. We're having a little coffee hour Tuesday at 10 if you are around and want to stop by as well. Um, but uh, she will be missed, and so um, it'll be me directly handling planning completely for the time being until we fill that position. So are you but acting plan two. <laughs> <laughs> Are you acting planning director or uh, I wouldn't go that far. I will defer <laughs> to Jean still. Yeah. But He's, <laughs> she is now acting director, uh, assistant to the to the town manager. Yep. And assistant town manager. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> other hats that may be announced <laughs> Yeah. Uh, exactly. So okay. Um, besides that, we'll have our regular scheduled hearing on March 20th, which we'll be posting an ad for 
next week that I'll be printing, and we have a continuance for Azalea Circle right. that I'll be following up on to get some updates on that. So, so what do we have planned for the twentieth? Just I think two hearings. The continuance. Two hearings plus the Azalea. No, Azalea plus. Plus one other one. Yeah. Two others. Two others. Oh, yeah, New Burger King. Okay, two others. Season is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Isn't it? Yeah. it looks like we're going to get mm -hmm. at least three a, three a night. <laughs> okay. No other no other information that you have. I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, hearing none before the board, I'll accept the motion for adjournment. So moved. Uh, motions. Do I hear a second? Second. Sorry, seconds. All in favor? Aye. Right. Six zero zero. Aye. Uh, yeah.